Today we're going to show you how we made about a half a dozen of these charcuterie boards and as you can see we did uh, some laser engraving on that side and then on the back side we also put a little Christmas greeting and from the bones. Uh, we made, I made six of these and I'm going to show you how we came up with the design in uh, Vetric, uh, V-Carve and Aspire. And then I'll show you how we milled them and then how we lasered them. So stay tuned and enjoy. And this makes a great gift whether you're doing just one for like a party you're going to or an anniversary or whatever. So you can make these in probably an hour tops. So stay tuned. So let's get started. We're going to go ahead and get into the uh, Vetric program. And here we are. Uh, normally you start a new job, you're going to pick the width, uh, the board it was 9.5 by 27 inches, 1.33 inches thick, material surface was on top, and the datum was in the middle. And it will cut through uh, when I set my tool paths. So what I'm going to do here, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a picture of a, a board assuming you don't have like plans that are already made and I happen to have one here uh, on my desktop let's see here desktop and board and open and I'm going to rotate that uh, 90 degrees minus 90 okay and then I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and resize this. Okay, so now we got a couple ways to go here. Uh, one, we could image trace this. And I took this picture uh, of one of the boards, so that's going to be very easy to image trace. We would come down here, click on the button, we would uh, got to select it first. Let's select this here. There we go. Then come over here to image trace. Come on. Okay. So it's going to be black and white. And we could sort of get an image right there. And let's see here. Let's get rid of some of the noise. Yeah, let's preview. Well, see, that didn't work very good. And that's what I wanted to show you. So we're going to actually uh, draw this. So let's get let's get out of here and close that. Okay, why is my program being okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tool over here, the uh, draw curves, and we're going to draw this. So we're going to start. Let's start right here. Click that. We'll come around to this side here. We're kind of dropping in about right there. We'll put one there, put one there, put one there, come up here, put one, put one there. Then I'm going to come over here and put one. Yeah, I'll put one on this side of it, then one here, one here, one there, one there, one there, and then we're going to, then we connected it together. So as you can see, you know, it ain't very close. But now we're going to go over here and we're going to select that vector. And let's see if we can't fade out this bitmap a bit. 
Did it gotta let me do that? No. Okay. There we go. So I've got that selected and we're going to hit N for node edit. And now here's where we do the magic. Uh, we can come in here. We're going to move this over to here. And we're going to move this one up to right about there. And now we're going to take the little handle and we're going to get that line as close as we can to our drawing. But it's very subjective, so you don't have to be exact if you don't want to be. And I'm not going to need this node because I'll be able to, I'm going to move this node out a little bit. And I'm going to get rid of this node. We'll delete it. And then from our handles, we'll be able to mimic that curve. And most pen tools work the same. Uh, Vetric is a little different. There's a few caveats in Vetrix, but uh, generally it's still the same. And learning how to do a pen tool is one of the things you're going to really want to learn because it really lets you do some nice stuff. And we're going to bring this one over here to the edge. And then we can use our to get it right up against that line. And up here we'll come out a little bit. And then that one will have to go up a little. And when you move one, it moves the other. So, but I'll show you how we eliminate that too. Okay, now we're down here. So we're going to move this one to the edge. And now we can use our handles to bring that in nice and tight. That looks, but we, we want to, you know what? I'm going to go a little more because we don't want a nice, we want a kind of a little rounded edge there. That just gives us some character. And then here, let's see, we want to be kind of up in there down there that's good now this one's going to be a little tougher i probably needed to add a point here i'm going to add one and then i'll bring that down over to here and then eh, let's, let's bring it a little more right there so now we can Bring this curve there. And now we're following that pretty good. And that's pretty good. So now we'll bring this down. I'm going to bring this in. To about right there. Move that out to the edge. Just give that a little extra curve there. And just so you know, the way I'm panning up and down like this while I'm doing this is by pushing the scroll wheel down on your mouse button. And that's how you can pan an image and move it as you're working. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to have to, okay, we need to bring this one down. And this one. We can probably eliminate this one here. That's the one we don't need. Because we'll bring this up. This over. And just by shortening them and moving them. You'll, you'll get a feel for how this has to go. There, that follows that pretty well. Now this one here, I'm going to need to move out to the edge. Move that in. Move that one up. And get that going. Move that one up. Got that. 
And then we come down to this sort of point right here. And if you just hover over it and hit the S on your keyboard, that breaks these away. So now I can take this one by itself without moving this one over here. And that's by hitting the hovering, don't click on it, hover and hit the S. Uh, you don't see anything in writing on that. Why, I don't know. I haven't found it in the manual. Now bring this one down just a little bit. There we go. Bring that up just a little. Yep. Okay, I think that's good enough right there for the outer one. And if I hide the uh, bitmap, that's not too bad. Okay, so now let's let's pick that a minute and right mouse click and let's move that. Oh, there we go. Oh, I mean, I gotta get out of that mode. Now I can say move to. I don't want to move it there. Should I move to layer one. That must be on layer one. Okay. So we got that part made. And now we're going to do the inner circle. So we'll come over here and get the tool again. And once again, we're going to let's zoom in on that. We'll start right there. Come over to here. Come to here, down there, up there, there, and back. Perfect. No, it ain't. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to select that and go to the node editing. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hover over this one and hit that S key so that I can manipulate just the one point. And that way I'm going to get my point there. And boom, just like that, we got that. Bring that down just a little hair. Using my arrow keys to kind of jog that down. And we're going to have to do the same thing here for this point. Oop. Going to hover over it, hit the S key. Now I can manipulate that with just one. Move this one up just a little. And then I can bring that over like that. And there we got our nice point there. Uh, we're going to get our point over here now. That one up there a little bit. And I think we got that one. So now, uh, let's make sure we got that on the right layer. Oop. Okay. We got, let's get the right tool. Yeah. See, that is in there. So I got my selection tool. I'll select that, right mouse click, and I'm going to move that to layer one. Okay. Now I can shut down my bitmap. And we got our, we got our charcuterie board. And we're ready to start milling this. Uh, except this looks like a little sharp corner right here. 
So let's zoom in on that. Let's find out what we got going on there. We have not a very good rounded. There, that's a little better. Yeah. Yep, and the rest of that all looks good. So we can get out of the node editing mode. So let's go over now. Now we're going to go over here and do some tool paths. And the first one I'm going to do is the outside tool path. And we're going to do a profile because we're cutting it out. Um, we're going to we're going to use our Z that'll give us our depth plus three thousandths, three hundredths, point zero three, and hit the equal sign. And now that's going to cut through the bottom of this piece by three thousandths. You don't have to remember how thick it was. It'll take the thickness you put in and add the three thousandths. So you can do math in these boxes. And here we're going to use a three eighths inch end mill. So I'm picking my three eighths inch end mill. And apply, select. And I want to be on the I want to be on the outside of the line because we're going to be cutting it out. We want tabs, so we're going to edit tabs. I'm going to want probably one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to want six tabs. So we're going to go over here to add tabs. Constant number six. Okay. And Okay, I want, I'm going to move this one down. When you click on it and you get that X, you can move it. And then this one, I want it to be up here where it's almost like a flat spot. It'll be easier to get off. Okay, so we have our tabs. We got everything there. We can close out the tab and let's calculate. And yes, it's going to cut through. And we'll do a preview. And then there's our tabs. And we see we got it cut. Now we got to cut the inner part. So we're going to close. Going to go back to our T2, T, uh, 2D view. Let's click the inner heart. Let's go up here and we're going to Cut that out. Uh, same distance, same end mill. But this time we want to be on the inside because now we're cutting inside this spot. And we are going to want tabs because that little piece will jam up. Uh, we're going to only want two tabs, ah, eh, three. Yeah, two, two is enough. I've done it before. Add tabs. And that'll be, and that should be good right there. Let me move that over. Uh, I'm going to bring this one down more right there on the flat spot. You don't usually want them in a curve anywhere. I think I'll go up here. And when we router this and put the rounded edge on it, it'll just, uh, you know, after we cut the tabs, it'll just knock the rest of those tabs off. So it, it ain't going to be any extra work. So we got our tabs, calculate that, preview it, and boom. Now we got our charcuterie board. Now, just looking at this right here, that looks just a tad thin, and but not too much though. But we could go back and change it, but I think that's going to be fine. So now we got both of our items. We can cut that out. And I'll show you how long it takes to run those two.
Three minutes and 38 seconds is what it takes to cut this out. And you have your charcuterie board. So, you know, we got it right there and we're good to go. So let's close this out. We would save it and take it over to the machine. Uh, I guess I'll show you that. Being we're using the same size bit, I can do both of these at the same time. We, we're going to do the selected toolpath, profile, 3 8 inch, let's see, visible, selected toolpath. Okay. Yeah, we're going to use our post processor. Oh, I'm up on a different computer here, so I don't have it on here. So that's going to be my A. There it is. Select it. I added it there. Apply. Okay. So now I can come over here and then there's a post processor. I'll save the toolpath. And I have a spot where we go, but right now I'll just save it on the desktop. So we've carved out our charcuterie board. And then now we got to do the lasering. So let's go back over here. And as you can see, I made up some of these. I can take one of these here. Whoop, I got to go back over here to copy it. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to move to sheet two. That's where we're at. There we go. Back on sheet two. And, okay. You know what, I should have made that bigger. But uh, yeah, I made it too small. But I can enlarge that and just scale it up. Um, but then we'd have our engraving here get that centered and now we'll go over to our we're over here close so now I'm going to select this and now we're going to choose laser because we're going to be we're going to be using the laser get a post processors figure yeah. Okay, I know what it was. And the oh, here it is. Uh, avid laser cut and fill. Fly. Okay. Now we can come down here, and uh, there we got our laser cut and fill. We're using our laser cutter. Power, we're going to be 90. And we're going to be cutting on the line. And then we'll calculate that. And then there's our... And the preview shows up. It won't be that blobby. It'll be a fine line. And so then we close that. We come over here to save this toolpath. And we're going to use the Avid CNC Laser Cut and Fill. Save the toolpath. And we're just going to call this the Laser Cut. We'll do that on the uh, desktop as well for now, just for demo purposes. And save it. And so now we're ready to go over and cut this out. So I'll see you over there in a minute or so.
So we're making Christmas gifts for a few of my neighbors. And as you can just see, the garage is completely out of control. Here's the uh, items we're making. These are going to be those sh charcuterie boards. And you can see, you know, I've, I've got the edges rounded, got it all lasered. Got two done by finishing. This one I've got out of the board. It's ready for rounding the edges. And then these two, I got to uh, cut off the tabs and get those out and ready for rounding the edges. So that's what I've been working on. But like I say, my garage right now is an incredible mess. So today it'll be like cleanup time to get some of this stuff put away and we'll get on to finishing these. Okay, we're going to cut the tabs on these. This is kind of straightforward. See, we still got the little nubs, but when I do the round over, that'll just knock those right off, so I don't even have to worry about sanding those down. So, that one. so I'm using my little Makita battery operated router, and this base is quite small, and so to keep it level on here and keep my hands away. I'm just going to make a quickie little base to put on here and that way I'll have something that I can use uh, you know that's a little more stable so I'm going to mark that up and do it I'm going to pop this one off By the way, these are the handiest magnetic little places when you're taking anything that has screws. So I'll set that aside. And what I'm going to do is put this on here. And I'm going to mark it. So now I have that all marked. Now I can go ahead and drill my holes and I will have a nice cover. Okay, so we're gonna finish making our little thing for the router.
Okay, got that there. Take that one out. Actually, I think I'll just drill the, well, yeah, I'm gonna drill the other holes. Should be enough. Before I take that paper off. I drilled those countersinks a little deeper and I believe now it should be perfect. Good. That's good. Okay. Okay.
the boards are made. Now it's just a matter of sanding and then putting the finish on. I'm going to put a little Christmas message on the back and our logo. Okay, I've got one left on the laser, and I've got our little Christmas message right there. So we got all our Christmas presents made right here in this one little shot for our neighbors and friends. As soon as that one's done running, all I got to do is put the oil on them and uh, we're good to go. Mineral oil, that is. Okay, now it's time to put a little bit of uh, life into these. So Paley is really one of the nicer woods out there. Probably should have got a whole tub of this and figured out a way to do that. Mm -hmm. 